Alright, I'm going to find a better way to do this than to bend my neck in front of this camera. But, we'll see how it goes. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Coffee and Comics. Comics and Coffee. Either way, like I say, it's always a good thing. But, welcome. How was your day going? I hope it's going well. Uh... Things I'm going to be having a very busy July. I I pause because I'm very excited. Uh, I'm going to Comic Con on uh, on that last Sunday, and then I just got my ticket for Chris Hardwick's Nerdist Live on Saturday. So I'm very excited for July to happen because it's going to be amazing. Uh, also, today is New Comic Book Day, as you can see by these wonderful, fast authors and drawers of the comic books that I have. We're going to be discussing those. Uh, news stories. Uh, Mary Jane is not going to be in any of the Spider-Man movies. Uh, Where are the Batman's new trailers out? And Ron Burgundy and the team are back together in New York City. So, shall we get started with the comic books of this week that I'm reading. Yes, let's do that. Oh, also, to start it off with, uh, I got this postcard with my comic books. It is called, if you can see from the glare, probably not, but it's called The Trinity Wars, and it has it's going to involve the Justice League, Justice League of America, and Justice League Dark. It's go it's going to be cross-pathing through all three... Justice League comic books. It starts June. It starts in June. That's what it says. Uh, and it goes uh, goes Prelude, and then it goes just you know Justice League. It goes through all the Justice League comic books, uh, and it ends in August. This is gonna be. I think it's gonna be pretty cool because you have the original Justice League, as you see right here, and then it has the Justice League of America, and then it has. Justice League Dark, all battling out against each other. Now, I don't think they're going to necessarily fight the whole time. They're probably going to fight, like, a couple times uh, where they meet each other and they, you know, don't have different views and all that stuff. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I can't wait for this to come out. The prelude is already up, so look, look out for that. All right, and then also we have... From Dark Horse, Victorious, issue number two, uh, and it says, As the ultimate hero loses his mind, it's Dee Dee's mo to rescue. Oh, it's Dee Dee's uh, job to rescue him. So, basically, if you haven't read Victorious yet, uh, it was a six series last year that introduced all the characters. They're kind of like the Justice League, but it's a group of uh, mis misfit superheroes or vigilantes that have, like, these, not necessarily, like, the normal superpowers. They don't, like, you know, not, like, strength or flight or speed or ocean or warrior. They're more um, out-of-the-box out powers. So... And it's done by Michael Avalon and... Well, I can't read the last one. But it is from Dark Horse. You should pick this up because it's a pretty awesome take on the whole teaming of superheroes and how they deal with their problems outside of being a superhero. So, that's pretty... I thought it's pretty good so far. So, check that out. Uh, we have the New Avengers... Issue seven. Uh, I have read. I have started reading this new Avengers. Uh, new Avengers, and it's not bad. It you know it has. It's going outside of. You know, not just showing Captain America, Thor, Iron Man. It's. Well, we'll put it this way. It's like the Justice League of America, where it has like all the other superheroes that you've, never really heard about, or you've heard about, but they don't have like their own issues of themselves. So, 
this is why they put him in the new Avengers. So, check this out because uh, it's a pretty awesome and beautiful cover art, by the way. I love. I always love Marvel's cover art too because you can tell that they, you know, put time into it and love what they do. So, check this one out as well. Uh, and then we got Batman and Robin. Uh, it's having a, in this issue. Well, it says Batman and Girl, Batgirl because yet again, Bat Robin is dead. But in this issue, uh, they show more of. Batgirl and Batman fighting together, and then, you know, Batman's still, he's in a serious depression. If, you re, if you've read the series from when Robin died to now, the man is seriously depressed, and he constantly keeps blaming himself, and it's making the whole family go down in a huge spiral. So, check this out as well, because it's a good story. I'm pretty sure they're going to bring Robin back, but I don't know how yet, and they won't probably explain it. Or they probably will be like, listen, we're going to bring Robin back like we killed him off. No one saw it coming, and it's just going to happen that way. So, hopefully, they do that. This is a good issue as well. I mean, it has, you know, it has its moments where it's just like, it's, it's kind of like intermingled with the whole death of Robin, and then... Barbara Gordon's father still trying to hunt for Batgirl because he thinks that Batgirl killed his son but doesn't know that you know, her daughter is Batgirl. It's a whole slew of mixed up things. So, you know, I think that's, that's a little too much putting two stories in the same comic book. But, hmm, what are you going to do? And then also we have Red Hood and the Outlaws, issue 21. Um... This one uh, continues on with, like I said yesterday, continues on with um, having Red Arrow and Starfire trying to figure out why Jason doesn't want to be followed and doesn't want to be remembered for who he really is and not and wants to start over again. Which doesn't make sense because on the last issue he still is acting like his old self, but he's claiming that it's not his old self. So, I don't know. We'll have to read more. I will have to read more. And if you continue with this series, we'll, then, like I said, we'll have to read more and see how it unfolds. But, it's good. The Batman stories so far have been really good as opposed to, uh, you know, the old Batman stories were kind of just repetitive and stuff. But these are like actual... These stories continue and have more of a plot at the end than, you know, just like solve the mystery and three count, three issues and then done. But I like those. Uh, I hope if you are buying new comic books this Wednesday, I hope you enjoy yours. I will do a review tomorrow on Review Thursday, so look forward to that. Now, shall we get to the news at hand. Alright, so, big story. Uh, the girl that was going to be playing Mary Jane in the Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, is no longer going to be in Spider-Man 2. And then they said, then I read the report and they were talking about she was going to be in Spider-Man 3, but then I read another report on the bottom of that saying that she's not going to be in Spider-Man 3. So... I don't know what Sony's doing. Um, that doesn't make sense. Uh, you're going with the whole storyline of the first, his first girlfriend dying, and then not bringing Mary Jane for the past two, the next two movies. That makes no sense. And then also, I read that Black Cat is supposed to be in this one. It's supposed to be in number two. So, to recap here, we have. Rhino is supposed to be in the second one. Uh, Electro is supposed to be in the second one. Mary Jane is not supposed to be in the second one. But Black Cat is supposed to be in the second one. And uh, continuing Peter Parker girlfriend is supposed to be in this one. I hope this story is really good. Because that's too many characters 
for one movie already. Okay. Too many characters for one movie and too many love two love interests already in the in it. So let's hope that this new Spider Man that comes out next year is gonna be good because right now what I'm reading I don't think it's going to be because it sounds it's not, there sounds like there's going to be a lot going on and won't you won't be able to focus on one part of the movie because you'll have too many things going on all at the same time. So let's hope that the story is really good. So, yes, let's keep your fingers crossed. Oh, okay. And next item of business. Uh, beware of the Batman. The, uh... Remember last year at Comic Con when they showed a sneak preview of the new animated series that Country Network is bringing out called Beware of the Batman? Well, the first official long trailer is out on the interwebs and it looks pretty good so far. Uh, it basically shows how Batman starts off and how he deals with uh, all sorts of new people. To fight because it's not only it's not only going to have the Joker in it, but it's going to be they're going to take villains from the new Fifty Two series and they're going to throw it in it. So it looks pretty good. Let's hope that Comedy Comedy Central, wrong channel. Let's hope that Cartoon Network doesn't have it run for a very long. Doesn't have it running and everyone starts getting into it and then they cancel it because that wouldn't be good. Because then that just decredits Cartoon Network from making any sort of good superhero show. Because then they, what's the point of having a good superhero show if you're going to cancel it? Who knows? Alright, and then also, lastly, but surely, the actual trailer for the Anchorman 2 uh, is up. So you'll get to see what the movie's going to be about. It looks pretty funny. I love the first one. First one's a classic. Um, yeah, so look out for it because it's going to have Ron Burgundy and his team go to New York and try to be a twenty-four hour in a twenty-four hour news place. So that should be fun. Uh, yeah, so look forward to that next year. Uh, I hope you all are having a great day. And please read more comics and subscribe to this channel and see you later.